All right, welcome to part four of the spatial inventory tutorial. So in the last three, I guess, we got it working so you can walk over items and it will pick them up and it will add them to the correct spot in your inventory. But the thing we need to do next is make it so we can actually drag these items around. And as you can see right now, when I drag, it um, is kind of like moving the camera around, which isn't um, ideal. So it's actually pretty easy to fix that. So basically what we need to do um, if we open up the uh, inventory widget and we go to the designer tab and we go to the border and we come down here and we <coughs> bind something to this on mouse button down. So let's just hit this and say create binding. Um, what we want to do here is simply just handle this event and let the let the system know that we already handled this event so that it doesn't have to do um, anything with this. So if we just return handled, you can see if we run this now and we do the same thing and I drag the mouse around and I click, it no longer moves it. And that's because we're basically telling the system that, you know, don't worry about this mouse down event, you know, don't process it. Uh, we handled it ourselves, even though we're not doing anything with it. But you'll notice if we do it over top of the grid, it still is happening. That's because we need to do the same thing for the grid. So if we go to the grid, go to the designer tab and we click on the border, scroll down and override on mouse button down. And again, just return handled like so. And just to test it real quick, you can see now wherever we click, it's not rotating our screen, but we can still walk around just fine, which is, which is what we want. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, um, well, the drag and dropping. So basically when we hover over an item, we want it to kind of have a white background to it or some sort of highlighted background to show that we are hovering over it. And then we also want to be able to drag it and drop it, right? So maybe let's do the hovering first. So, um, let's go to the item widget and then let me open it up on my other screen just so I can have something to copy. Okay. So in the event graph, we are going to override. So down here below refresh, we are going to override the on mouse button down. No, wait, that's not the right one. Hold on. Control Z undo that. Um, what is it called? On mouse enter, I think. Yes, on mouse enter. There we go. That's the one I wanted. So on mouse enter. And we also want to override. Um, what is it called? On mouse leave. Okay. So these events get called obviously when the mouse enters this section, or when it leaves this section of the UI. So when it enters this section, we can safely assume that the mouse is hovering over the item. So all we wanted to do is drag in the background border and we will say set brush color. And the color we want to set it to is really up to you, but you basically just want to make it some sort of like highlighted color. So in this case, I'm going to use 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and like 0 0.2. So some like kind of whitish looking color. And then when it leaves, you want to set it back to whatever you currently have it set to. So if you go to your designer tab and you click on the border, you can see the brush color is currently set to 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.5. So that's what we want to set it back to. So we'll just copy this and we will say 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.5. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, so now if we run this, and we go and we pick up some stuff and we hover over the stuffs. You can see it now kind of shows us a little highlighted version of the icon to show us where we are hovering over. So that's pretty easy. Um, the next thing we need to do is the drag and dropping. So in order for this to work, um, we need to override a very specific event and it is called Let's see if we can find it. On drag detected. So on drag detected, basically get called whenever the system detects that you've started dragging something. So whenever you start holding down the mouse and then moving it. So this is a drag, obviously, right? So whenever it detects that a drag is, has started, it's going to call this event. So what 
Um, what we need to do inside of here is we need to then go ahead and create a drag and drop operation. So if you right click and you search for create drag and drop operation, it will show up. And so let's go ahead and create this. Um, so the important things here are the payload and the default drag visual. So the payload is essentially, if you hover over it, it probably explains it better than I can. It says the payload of the drag operation. This can be any U object that you want to pass along as dragged data. So, and it even says, if you were building an inventory screen, this would be the U object representing the item being moved to another slot. So it pretty much tells us exactly what it needs to be. It needs to be the, the object that represents the thing we're dragging, which of course is our item object. So we will hook that up. And then the default drag visual is the widget it will display while it's being dragged. And we basically can just pass in ourself because we don't really want it to change. If you wanted the, if you wanted the, image to look different when you were dragging it for some reason, you could create your own type of widget here and pass it in, but we're just going to pass in ourselves because we don't want it to really change. And then once we have it created, we then want to remove the item object from the inventory because as soon as we start dragging it, we're going to count it as removed from the inventory. So we can say item object and we want to call on removed so we'll call our on removed event like so and then we also want to remove it from parent so remove from oops remove from parent which will remove it from the screen itself and then we want to return the operation so drag this guy over here and then I'm just going to add some reroute nodes so it doesn't cut through everything okay <clears throat> Um, I think that's, let me see here for a second. I think that might be all we need to do to see it. Oh, wait, actually one thing. So in order for this to get called, um, you need to also do something else. So if you override the on mouse button down, uh, you have to drag out this mouse event and say detect drag if pressed. If you don't do this, then the on drag detected will never get called. So you kind of have to tell it to like keep an eye out for um, a drag to happen, which is essentially what this is doing. And then you need to select the key that you want to use for dragging. So you want to use the left mouse button. Um, if you had a controller or something, you'd use like, you know, whatever you want here. But so the left mouse button is the key we want to detect the drag for. And so this makes sure it gets called and then that will eventually call this once the drag happens. And so if we go ahead and we play this now, we should be able to at least start dragging something, I think. Yes, so there we go. So I can now drag this around, but if I drop it, it's just like disappears into, well, who really knows where it goes, but it's just gone forever. Oh, it came back. Oh, I was guess because I'm picking it up again or something. I don't know, but it's in a weird state right now, <laughs> but we can at least start dragging things. Um... So the next thing we need to do is handle the drops. So what I mean by that is when we are dragging something and then we drop it somewhere, well, it needs to figure out what it can do. And if you if you think about it here, so if we run this again, so when we're dragging an item, we can either drop it like out here. And if we drop it out here outside of our inventory, then we want to drop it on the ground in front of the player. But if we drop it in our inventory, then we want to try to add it to the location where we dropped it at. And then if it doesn't fit there, then we want to try to add it just anywhere to the inventory. And if it can't fit anywhere in the inventory, then we want to just default to dropping it on the ground. So that's kind of like the logic behind how this is going to work. So let's start with the inventory. Oh, I don't know. Let's start with dropping things on the ground first, because I think we need that in order to do the other one. So for dropping things on the ground, we basically want to detect if the mouse is over top of this area whenever we drop it. So to do that, if we go to the inventory widget, we can override um, the on drop event. So over here on the left, we can say override and on, where is it? On drop. So this will get called whenever a drag and drop operation is dropped over top of this widget. So inside of here, what we want to do is we just want to drop the item on the ground. So this is the operation. So we can say 
get payload. And if you remember, the payload is the actual item object. And so we can then cast this to our BP underscore item object. And we want to make it a pure cast, so we don't need the pins. And then after that, we want to spawn this item. So the way I did this in my tutorial is because you can't actually, well, you can spawn items here, but since we're going to be dropping things in multiple places, like we drop things here, but we also drop things if it doesn't fit in our inventory. We want to have like a nice way of dropping things that can be called from it anywhere. So what we're actually going to do is inside of our um, game state, we're going to add the functionality so that anybody can call it from anywhere. Just going to make things a little bit easier for you. So if you already have a game state, feel free to add this code to your existing game state. It's just going to be a little bit of code. It's not going to be anything major. Um, but if you don't already have a game state, then what you want to do is you want to right click. Um, I guess we can just do it here. Right click and say blueprint class, and we want to create a new game state. Now, when you're creating a game state, you can either choose base or like the one without base at the end of it. And if you hover over it, it says that the game state is for multiplayer. It has like special stuff built in if you're doing a multiplayer game. And game state base is just like a generic game state. So depending on if you're doing multiplayer or not, you might want to select the appropriate one, but I'm not doing multiplayer, so I'm just going to select game state base. And then we will just call this my game state. And so inside of here, we're just going to create uh, like a handy little function that handles dropping things. So I'm going to make a new function, and it's going to be called spawn item from actor. And the reason it's called spawn item from actor is because it's going to take in an actor, and it's going to spawn the item in front of that actor. So like I just said, we want it to take in an actor. So we will add a actor and we will set the type to actor object reference and we will also add the item that we're trying to drop so we'll say item object and this will be the item object actually let me put this one on top i'm going to rearrange these and this one should be called actor i thought i already named it but i guess not and then we're also going to have a boolean value so add one more and we will call this clamp or ground clamp. So if this is true, then we're going to clamp the object to the ground. Otherwise, we're just going to drop it wherever they tell us to drop it at. So inside of here, um, we're going to make a sequence node. And again, to create that, just hold down S and left click, and it will create a sequence node. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the spawn location, like where we want to spawn it at, um, based on if this ground clamp boolean is checked. So um, what we want to do is we want to take the actor that's passed in. So we'll say get actor and scroll down. So get actor. And we want to get the location. So we'll say get actor location. And then we want to get a location slightly in front of the player. So we'll say get forward vector. And then we want to multiply this. So we'll say float multiply. And then you can pass whatever value you want here. I think I used like 150, but the higher value you use, the more in front of the player it will be. It just needs to be in front of the player enough so that when he drops it, he won't automatically pick it up again. And then we'll say vector plus vector. We will add that to the location. And then we're going to promote this to a local variable. And we will call this the spawn location and then local. So this is where we're going to spawn it at, assuming there's no ground clamping. So let's hook that up. And so the next thing we need to check is, well, obviously, um, did they ask us to ground clamp it? So if we right click and say get ground clamp. So if this is true, then we just want to do a quick little line trace. So we will say line trace by channel. And then the start location is going to be our spawn location and then the endpoint is going to be our spawn location minus so we'll say minus vector and we want to subtract from it just some high value so we'll say like a thousand so that it goes from the item into the ground and then we can just leave all this as default and then we want to check if it actually hits something 
made it did. Then we want to break this, so we'll break hit result. And then we need to expand this. And if it did hit something, then we want to update our spawn location. So just drag in our spawn location and set it to the location of the hit. So we'll just drag in the location. All right, so again, all this is doing so far is just calculating where we're spawning it at. So by default, it spawns it in front of the player. And then it checks if ground clamping is true. And if it is, then it just finds the ground and updates it to be that location. And then the next thing it needs to do is actually, of course, spawn the um, spawn the item. So we will say spawn actor from class and hook that up. And then we're going to split the spawn transform so that we can specify the location separately. So we'll just pass in our location. Apparently it doesn't want me to. Say so git, pass that in. And then the class is going to be um, or we're going to get the class from the item object because if you remember the item object stores the class that it you know that it represents essentially so if we say get item object we can say get item class oh wait we didn't write that function so we just need to make an accessor real quick we'll just take a second so if we go to the item object we want to make a function and just call it get item class drag it into the public category, make it pure const, and we want to return the class, so drag in the class and return that guy like so. All right, and then back in the game state, we can now say get item class, hook that up, like so. And then for the item object, we will obviously just pass in the item object, so it already has it. And then we can compile and save, and there we go. So now we have a function that will spawn the item for us right in front of whatever actor we specify. So if we go back to our inventory widget, and we go back to this on drop function, we can now get our game state. Oh, I guess one thing we should probably do is set our game state. So you got to make sure your game state is actually being used. So if you go to your edit project settings and your maps and modes, you need to make sure that under the selected game mode, you have your game state. So game state set to whichever one you've added that function to. Again, if you've added that function to an already existing game state, then just make sure you're using that game state. Um, so make sure you set it here. And I guess one thing to note, if you're kind of new to Unreal, well, first of all, congratulations on getting this far. <laughs> but in the world settings, if you go to game mode override, um, you want to make sure this is either set to none or it's set to something and it's using your game state. Because if this is set to something, it's going to override whatever game state you've set in your project settings to use this one, whichever one you have specified here. So you got to make sure that it's using your game state, otherwise this won't work. So uh, back in over here, we will say, or actually we'll say get game state. And then we will cast to my game state. And then we will say spawn item from actor. And we will just return true. And then we want to um, spawn this item. And then the actor is going to be whoever owns the inventory component. So we can say inventory component. Now oh, come on, get owner. So the beauty of this is that if you have like, again, if you had like a crate in your game that you wanted to, you know, maybe it was like a box that you could walk up to and like put things in or take things out of, kind of like Fallout, and you wanted it to use this inventory system, well, it would, it would, just, it would just work because if that crate were to drop an item, it would get the owner, which would be the crate, and it would drop it in front of the crate. And if it's the player, it'll drop it in front of the player. And if it's, you know, whatever it is in your game, it'll just drop it in front of whatever thing owns that inventory, right? So it should work for pretty much any use case that you have. And then we want to select true for the ground clamp because we want it to be ground clamped. And there we go. So if we run this now, and we go and we pick up the AK, and then we press I, and we drag out here, and we drop it, you can see it drops on the ground. And we can pick it up again, and then we can drop it, and things work pretty nicely. Uh, oh, so, well, not quite nicely yet. So we didn't actually write the function to 
remove items, which is why they're not being added back correctly or in the correct spot. So we need to make or we need to write that function that actually removes items from the inventory. It's actually really simple. So if we go back to our inventory component and we go to remove items, remember we left this guy totally blank, which is why it's not quite working. Um, so let's just fill this out real quick. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the item we're removing is valid. So we'll say is valid. And if it is valid, then we want to loop over all of our items. So we'll say it's for each loop. And then for each item, we basically want to check if that item rep or if that item equals the item we're dropping. And if it does, then we want to set it to nothing basically, or like invalidate it. So we'll say equals, and we want to check if it equals the get item object. And if it does, we'll do a branch. Then we want to say items set array element. And so we want to set the array element at this index. So we'll drag in the index, clean it up a little bit. So we want to set the item at that index to nothing. So we really just want to leave this empty. And then we also want to set is dirty to true, since we are removing something. And then we should be good to go. So now if we run this, and we pick up some items, and we drop, and we drop, and we drop, and we pick it up again. I'm just making sure this is all working as I would expect it to. Drop this guy, drop this guy, drop this guy, pick them all up. Yeah, it seems to be working pretty well, I think. Let me drop this guy, drop this guy, pick up this guy. Yeah, okay. So it seems to be working correctly now. Things are getting added where we would expect them to. Obviously, we don't have the rotation working yet, so you can't rotate items to make them fit better, but we will do that here shortly. Okay, so now we have dropping working. So the next thing we need to do is handling, like, moving items inside the inventory. So if we go to the inventory grid widget, we also want to override that... Um, on drop. So if we come up here and we say override on drop, and then it pops it up down here. So basically inside of here, we kind of want to do similar stuff with getting the payload and all that good stuff. And then, but instead of dropping it on the ground, we just want to move where it is inside of the, um, inside of the grid. So this one's going to be a little bit more complicated, but shouldn't be too difficult. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a function for getting the payload. It would be a very simple function, but it's just going to make our lives easier because we're going to be doing this a bunch. So let's make a function and call it get payload. And I'm going to move it into the drag and drop category just because it's pretty much related to that. And we can make it private as well. And we can make it constant as well. And so inside of here, we want it to take in a drag drop operation. So drag drop operation, we'll call it drag drop operation. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to check if this is valid. And if it's not valid, we want to go ahead and just return nothing basically. So for the output, um, we're actually going to be returning the payload. So the payload is going to be the BP underscore BP underscore item object, and we will call this the, I guess we can just call it payload. And so if it's not valid, we want to just return an empty payload. Um, but if it is valid, then we want to take this guy and we want to do a get payload and make sure you get the variable. So get payload, and then we'll say cast to BP item object. And we'll do a pure cast since we know it's going to succeed. And we want to return that. So we're going to copy and paste, hook that up, and hook that up. So again, this is just a little helper function for getting the payload casted as an item object out of our drag and drop operation. So if we come back to on drop, the first thing we want to do here is we want to create a sequence node. And the reason we're doing this is kind of like before, um, if it gets all the way through, 
then we want it to return true, otherwise we want it to return false. So since that's the case, we're going to put a return true down here on the then one, and then we will continue through this. So we will say get payload off of the drag and drop operation, like so. And then we can actually just delete this guy. And so we get the payload, and the first thing we want to check is if there is room available, like at the location where we're trying to drop this item. Because if there is not room available, then, well, if there is room available, then obviously we just want to drop it there. But if there's not room available, then we want to try to add it to the inventory, just anywhere else that it will fit. So we can drag off of the payload and we'll use our is, um, uh, wait a minute is room or is this a function i wrote oh i guess i did so we need to make another function i forgot so let's go ahead and add another function drag it into the drag and drop category as well and this one will be called um is room available for payload and this one's just mostly going to be calling the other is room available function so it's not going to be too bad or anything like that uh, we can make this private and constant as well and so inside of here, what we want to do is again start out with a sequence. And we need to take in, actually, yeah, we need to take in the payload, which I believe is just an item object. Let me double check on my other one. Yeah. So an item object, and we will call it the payload. And it's going to output whether or not room is available. So it's going to return a Boolean. And we will just call this the result. Like so. And so by default, we want to return false unless it makes it all the way to the end, in which case we're going to return true. So we'll add false down here. And then we will say is valid to make sure it's actually valid, because obviously we don't want to do anything if it's not valid. And so if it is valid, we want to check if there is room available in the inventory component. So if we drag in our inventory component, we can say is room available which is that massive function we wrote earlier. And then we just need to specify the item object in the top left corner. So the item object is obviously going to be our payload. So we'll just say get payload. Oops, not that one. Get payload, the input parameter, this guy over here. And then the top left corner is going to be, um, oh, we haven't written that yet. We will, well, okay. so. Over here on the left, we need to add a variable, which we will fill out in a second. But we basically need to have a variable that represents where the cursor is. So if we say variable, we're going to call this um, dragged item top left tile. So this is going to be the top left tile of where the item is currently being dragged or dropped over. And we want to change the type of this. Um, to be a int point, so we'll say int point, which again is just an x and a y, and we want to make sure it's not an array. And then we can add this to a drag and drop category and make it private, so we'll say private, and then we'll add it to a drag and drop category, just because it's kind of related to that. And then I guess since while we're here, um, we're going to add another variable which we'll make use later. Just go ahead and duplicate this guy, and then call it um, draw drop location and make this a bool. So we're going to use this bool for um, whether or not we should be drawing the drop location, which is that green or red like highlight behind the item. But yeah, we'll, we'll come back and use this later. But the main thing we need right now is this guy. So the is room available needs the top left index. So we're going to be using this guy. So if we drag this in, we can say um, drag in our inventory component as well. So we need to convert this tile into an index. So we'll say tile to index and then we'll split this guy and split this guy and hook up the x to the x and the y to the y and again we'll fill out or we'll, we'll be setting this variable in a different spot um, but for now just assume that it is the top left corner of where our mouse is so basically where we're trying to drop at and so we're checking if room is available and then we just want to go ahead and return that so we'll just copy this guy and we will return whatever that returns so now we have a function that will check if the room is available for our payload to be dropped. So if we come back to our on dropped, 
we can call is room available for payload. And then we can do a branch, because again, we need to do different things depending on if the room is available or not. So if room is available, then we can simply just add the item to the inventory at the specified index, which is pretty easy. So we'll just say, um, we want to get this operation. So we'll just right click and say get operation and we will get the payload from it, get payload, which again is just our item object. Look us up to the true. And then we will say inventory component, add item at, or add item. Oh, maybe I made that function private on accident. Let me go double check. Um, go back to the inventory component. And where is add item? Oh, that's not the inventory component. Um, inventory component, add item at. Yeah, this should not be private. So this should be public since we need to actually call it and then we'll make it public over here as well. So that way we can actually call it. And then we will come back to where we were before, which is inventory grid, or where were we? Inventory on drop, yes. Inventory grid on drop. Let me go back to it on my other monitor as well. Uh, sorry, I got confused there for a second. Okay, so now we can call add item at. And so, Again, this, if you remember from before, this function is just assuming that you already checked that there's room available, which we have. So I just wanna make sure people understand that. You don't wanna just call this willy nilly. Um, so the item we wanna add is our payload. And then the location is going to be the drag tile top left corner, except we need to convert it to an index. So again, we'll take the inventory component and we'll say, tile to index and we'll split this guy split this guy and hook that up like so pretty straightforward just move this around so it's a little more organized and then move this up here so that's basically what we want to do and i think we can even run this now and we can see it working at least partially so if we pick this up and we drag it down here and drop it Oh wait, it's not gonna work yet because we haven't set the drag tile top lift yet. We need to set that first. Um, let me figure out where I set that again. Find references. One second, let me look at my other project. Um, oh, right. Okay, actually let's just finish writing this and then we'll set that variable and then it should work. So let's handle the case. Or actually, let's just, let's just do the other one first because I think it'd be better if I can show you it working. So there's another function we need to override here because we need to be able to set this variable. So if we override um, on drag over, I think it's called, yeah, on drag over. So this is getting called whenever the mouse is currently being dragged over like the widget. So whenever it's being dragged over top of the grid. And when it's being dragged over top of the grid, we want to basically, we want to set that variable, this, uh, dragged item top left tile because we want to be able to calculate that and we also want to determine whether or not we should draw that background green or red color so inside of here we're going to start out with a sequence again again i just like to do this whenever i am always wanting to return like true so we're going to return true and then from there the first thing we're going to do is calculate the dragged items top left tile so let's drag this guy in and this is actually going to be a rather lengthy calculation but so <laughs> just move this over here so what we want to do is we want to get the geometry and we want to get the mouse position from it so we will say get or uh, get my geometry and we will say absolute to local and then we want to get the pointer event which is information about the mouse so we'll say get pointer event and we want to get screen space position. So that's the screen space position of the mouse. And we are converting it to local space for our widget. And so this is going to be our mouse position. So I'm just going to make this a local variable, promote to local variable. And we will call this the mouse 
position. And we'll make it local like so. And then we can hook this up. So that's the first thing we need to do. So now, now, I know where the, now we know where the mouse is, but we need to know where the top left tile is. So we're going to make a little function called mouse position in tile. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell us if the mouse is in the top, the bottom, the left, or the right side of the tile. Because let me just run my other project real quick. Because it's actually kind of complicated to explain. So you can see this green border that's showing up behind it. It doesn't, it's not perfectly behind the, um, it's not perfectly behind the border of the thing we're dragging. It only shows up inside of the tile. So if you look at where the mouse actually is, so right now it's inside of, I have to try to put it in the center of this tile. So if you look at the tile that's around the mouse, you can see it's pretty much in the center of the tile. If I start going to the left side of the tile, you can see the green border shifts left because it sees, okay, you're more to the left, so we're gonna shift to the left. And if you go to the right, you can see the green border will shift to the left, to the right, and same with up. So if I go up, I'm already on the upper half. Um, let me look at this one. So if I go up or down, you can see it shifts depending on where the mouse is. So it's basically trying to find the best location for the drop is what's happening. So we wanna make a function that tells us if it's like on the right side, the left side, the top side, or the bottom side. So we'll make a function and let's see here, make a function and we will call it um, mouse position in tile. And then let's add this to the private category. So drag it up to the private category and make it private. And so this is going to take in um, a vector 2D for the position of the mouse. So input parameter vector 2D. We will call this the mouse position. And then it's going to return two booleans. So it's going to return one for if it's on the right side. So if it's true, that means it's on the right side. If it's false, that means it's on the left side. And then another boolean for if it's on the bottom. So we'll just call it down. And so what we want to do here is just a little bit of math to figure out which side it's on. So we're going to take the X and we'll say um, F mod. So if you search for F mod, or maybe what is it called? Uh, if we do the percent sign, it will show up. Yeah, so it's this thing, whatever this is called, modulo. So we want to select this guy and we want to module it by the tile size. And then we want to check if this is greater than, oops, quote greater than the tile size divided by two. So we'll say set tile size vote divided by two. If it is, then that means it's on the right side. So we'll hook that up to that Boolean. And we basically want to do the same thing for the um, mouse position Y. So we will take this. Actually, I'm just going to copy all of this and paste. And then we will paste the, or copy this into here. And then I don't think we need to actually change anything. We just need to hook this up into the down output pin. Let me just double check that that is correct. Yes, I think it is. Okay. So for this guy, um, yeah, we can make it private and we can also make it const as well. And then we can come back here to our on drop. Or no, where were we? We were inside of on drag over, right? So inside of on drag over, we want to then use this function. So we'll say, uh, where is it? Mouse position to tile. And we will pass in our mouse position. And then we will also make local variables for these because we'll be using them later. So we'll say right click promote to local variable and we will call this right local and right click again, promote to local variable. And we will call this down local like so. And then now that we have where the position of the mouse is inside of the tile, we can use that to calculate um, this dragged item top left. So to do that, um, let's drag, let's get our operation. So we want to get this guy. So we will say get operation. And we're going to do this kind of down here because it's going to be a little long. And we want to Actually, we can just call, um, right now we'll just do this. We'll say get 
payload. And then we want to cast this to our item object. So cast to item object. And we'll make this a pure cast. And so from here, we want to get the dimensions of the object. So get dimensions. And we're going to split this guy. And we are going to do a int subtract. So integer minus integer. And we want to subtract one if we are on the right side. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. So we will say drag in right. And we will say select. And we will hook up the input into there. And then if it's true, we will pass in one. And if it's false, we just want to leave that at zero. So something like this. And we want to clamp this value. So we'll say clamp integer between zero and whatever the max is, because basically we just want to make sure it doesn't go below zero. And then we're going to copy this and paste and do the same thing for the y, except we want to replace the right local with down. So we can just drag this on top. So we have down local and hook that up. And then we want to take this value and make, oops, take these values and make a point from it. So we'll say make int point, make int point like so. And then we want to divide this by two so we can get the center. So we'll say integer divided by, or int point divided by integer, and we will pass in two. And we want to take this value and we want to subtract it from the mouse's position, basically. So we will say get mouse, get mouse position local. And we will say divided by the tile size. Which is over here. And then we want to subtract. So we actually want to use a int point subtraction. So if we search for int point subtract, we want this one. So int point minus int point. And then we want to split this top pin. And we want to split this and then hook these up. And it's going to do a truncate, and that's OK because we want it to truncate. And then this is going to be the subtract. And then this is going to be our dragged top left. So I know that was a lot to follow, but it's basically just some math to figure out where the top left point is. Nothing crazy. All right, so I believe that's all we need to do for that function. Um, let me just, oh, do we not? Yeah, OK. So now that we have this, we can try to run this again. So if we run this and we go and we pick up our guns and we start dragging and we drop it, you can see it now will drop it at wherever we select it. But we would like to be able to see like where it's dropping it at. And we also want to see if it's a bad drop or not. And currently also right now, if we try to drop it on top of something that's already there, it just gets deleted basically because we're not handling that case. So if we come back to, actually, let me look at something real quick on my other project. Where am I sitting? Uh, okay. So, yeah, let's go back and finish the um, the on drop function first, and then we'll figure out the highlight stuff. So on drop. So inside of here, we want to. Uh, get this operation again. So we'll say get operation. And what we're doing right now is we are writing the code for if there is no room available um, for where we're trying to drop it at. And if that's the case, then what we want to do is we want to try to add the item to the inventory somewhere else. We don't really care where exactly, just add it to the best available slot. Um, but if we can't even do that, then we just want to drop it on the ground. So uh, first thing we're going to do is just like we did up here, we're going to say get payload. And like I said before, we want to try to add it to the inventory. So we'll say inventory component, try add item. And then the item we want to add is obviously our payload. Drag this around. And so if that succeeds, then like everything's great. But if it does not succeed, so we want to do a not boolean and do a branch. 
If that does not succeed, then we want to drop it on the ground. So that's why we put it inside of the game state so we can easily access it. So we'll just say get game state and we will cast to my game state and then we will call spawn item from actor and of course the actor we want to spawn it from is the inventory component's owner so we'll just say get owner the item object itself is the payload so we'll just drag this guy over and hook it up like so and then we want to ground clamp it obviously and so now if we try to run this we should be able to drop things wherever we want and have it handle it correctly so we pick up everything and if we try to drag the AK somewhere valid, then it works. If we try to drag it somewhere invalid, like right here, you can see it pops it up here because it's just adds it wherever it can. And same with the grenade or the knife. Um, but if we drag things out, you can see they drop just fine. And so everything seems to be working. The only real thing we need to do right now is the rotation and then having it show the little green and red behind the um, behind the like where we're hovering it over basically um, so that's not going to be too hard so let me just check where I'm doing this right so on the inventory grid widget we want to go back to the event graph here and we want to override we can just delete this stuff because we don't actually need it we only really care about two events in here so if we override on drag enter if I can find it on drag enter. So when drag enters, we want to set our draw drop location to true. So basically, whenever we start doing a drag and drop operation, we want to draw that background color, the green or the red. And then on leave, so we'll also override on drag leave, we want to set it to false. And so now, um, if we go to our on paint function, which we did in part one, if you remember that long ago, we have this to do over here for drawing the drop location. So we can actually write that now. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna first of all, just make sure that we are actually dragging something. So we'll say is, I guess I didn't really need to delete that comment. Well, yeah, we can delete it. We'll add it when we're done. So we'll say is, um, is drag dropping. So this is going to return true if we're currently in the process of a drag and drop operation. And so if that's the case, we want to say and boolean, and we want to check this boolean that we just set to true. So if, if we're drag and dropping something and we've been told to draw the drop location, let's do a branch to make sure both of those are true. And if they are both true, then we want to get the payload. So we will, first of all, get the drag and drop operation, so get drag drop content and then from here we will say get payload which is the function we wrote which gets the payload for us as an item object and then from there we want to check if there is room available under where we are hovering the item because if you remember I'll just run my other project real quick if there is not room available so if I try to drag it over top of this it shows as red but if there is room available it shows as green so we need it to check if room is available. So we will say, um, is room available for payload? And then we will drag off this and do a select node. And we will eventually be calling um, draw box. So we want to draw a box. And then the color is going to be either green or red. So if you drag in the return node here to the tent, and then for true, you can set it to be whatever you want. So for true, I used um, like a green color. So, or wait, let me look at my projects who I used exactly. So I used 0, 1, 0, and 0 0.25. And then for the red, I probably just used 1, 0, 0, and 0 0.25. Okay, so that's the tint. Um, for the brush, we can select our SV color, which we created in part one, which is just a, a default slate brush, but this is why we need it. 
And then it needs the position and it needs the size. And it needs the context. So the context is just get context, which again is coming from up here. Uh, the position is going to be the top left tile. So we'll drag in the top left tile. We're going to need to make some room. Let me actually, we're going to do this to clean this up a little. Move this guy up here so because we can have some stuff down here. Okay, so the dragged or the dragged item top left tile, we want to um, multiply this by a float. So we will say float. Oh, we can't do that. Um, we need to convert this to a what is this? Hold on. Um, we need to convert this to a vector 2D. So vector 2D. And then we need to float multiply by the tile size. And that is going to give us the position. So that will go into here. And then the size is going to be dependent on the dimensions of the payload. So we will make a little reroute node here. And we will say get dimensions. And we will split this guy up. And we just need to multiply each one of these by the tile size as well. So we'll say float multiply by the tile size for each one of these guys. So I'm just going to copy and paste. And this is going to be the size. So we can split this guy. And that's the size X and the size Y. So now if we run this, we pick up our items. You can see when we start dragging, it's going to draw the color accordingly. And it's green if it's good, and it's red if it's if it's bad. Just kind of testing to make sure this is all working good. Let me just run through a few tests here to make sure everything's good to go. And we still need to do the rotation. I haven't forgotten that yet. It's actually not very hard to do now that we have everything set up. Okay, so this seems to be working pretty well. Okay, so I think the last thing we need to do here is a couple things with the rotation. So, um, let's see. So to do the rotation, I think I did that inside of, let me look at my other project for a second to figure out where I did that. Um, I thought it was there. Hold on one second, let me just move this over here so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Uh, I don't remember where I did this at. Uh, maybe I did it in here. No. Uh, here, maybe. I'm looking for on input, on preview key down. Oh, okay, yeah, this is where I did it. Okay, so, oh, come on. I hate that you can't drag this window if you have too much stuff open. It really annoys me. Like, why is this the case? Drag it over here. Okay. So we need to go to... Um, now I forgot where it was. Oh, yeah. Inventory grid widget. So inventory grid widget. And so over here on the left, we need to override the on preview key down because we want to rotate it whenever we press the R key. So we override on preview key down. We want to check if the R key is being pressed. So to do that, we can say get key. And we will check if the key equals the R key. And then we'll do a branch. So branch. So if it equals the R key, that means we want to rotate it. So we will get our drag drop operation. So get drag drop content, and we will get the payload. So get payload. And then we will make sure it is actually valid. And if it is valid, then we want to rotate it. So we just need to write a rotate function, and it's literally going to be the simplest function ever. It's just going to flip a Boolean. So Inside of our item object, or sorry, uh, where is item object? Did I close it? Inside of item object, we just want to write a function and call it rotate. So we will say rotate. 
And then we want this to obviously be public, so we'll add it to the public category. And then all this is going to do is take rotation, and it's going to say not Boolean, and then it's going to set it to whatever that is. So it's basically gonna set it to true if it's false, or it's gonna set it to false if it's true. So it's basically just flipping it around. And I guess while we're here, we'll make another one for is rotated, because we're gonna need that. So we'll say is rotated, and for this one, it can be pure and const. We also want to add it to the public category, and this one is just going to return if it is rotated, just like so. Pretty straightforward. Um, and so now we can come back here to our item widget, or inventory widget. There's so many windows open. Um, wait, where is it? Uh, sorry, I've been doing this for like ever. Did I close that window? Inventory grid widget. Here it is. Okay, so we want to check or we want to rotate it. So we will drag off this guy and say rotate something like this. And then after it's rotated, we want to call refresh because we need to update the rendering of it to actually show as rotated. So we will call refresh. And we want to call refresh, or actually, no, we don't want to call that. We want to call refresh on the actual item widget. So drag off of this guy and say, get the, get the, um, get the drag visual. Yeah, get drag visual. And then we want to cast to item widget. And then from this, we want to call refresh. So we'll say refresh, which will redraw it in the rotated orientation, something like that. And then finally, we want to return that we handled this. So we'll say handled. And then I think that might be it. Um, yes, okay, so let's try this now. We might have forgotten something, but we'll see. Pick all these up. So we can press R and it doesn't do anything. Fantastic. So why doesn't it do anything? So R. All right. So we forgot to. So inside of um, inside of BP item object, inside of get dimensions, um, we need to update this to work with the rotation. So just scoot this over. So we need to add a branch node here for whether or not it's currently rotated or not, because we need to rotate the dimensions if it's rotated. So drag and rotate it, hook that up. And so if it is rotated, we want to return, or sorry, if it's not rotated, we want to just return the normal dimensions. Um, but if it is rotated, I'm gonna copy and paste this. We wanna just flip the dimensions around. So I'm gonna unhook this and then split this node and split this node, and then we're just gonna crisscross these. So the Y returns in the X and the X returns to the Y. And so let's try this again. So now if we pick up some items and we press R. Oh, that still didn't work. What the heck, hold on, let me look some more. All right, sorry, I had to edit out part while I tried to figure out why it wasn't working, but I forgot to, so in the item widget, so go to the item widget and select the topmost thing over here on the hierarchy. And you have to set is focusable to true because otherwise the on preview down will not actually get called. So the problem was that um, this was not actually getting called. So now if we run this and we pick up our items, we press I and we press R, you can see it rotates and it also updates collision accordingly, which is nice. So the only other feature that I have in my example tutorial at the beginning is, so let's say for example that um, we make this AK larger in terms of width than the width of the grid. So if we go to our AK and let's say we make this like eight by three instead. So an eight by three item should be able to fit in this grid because it should be able to fit into it if it was rotated. But you see, if I try to pick up this AK, it's not working. And that's because the try add item function doesn't 
Um, it doesn't try to rotate the item if it doesn't fit. It just assumes if it doesn't fit in its current orientation that it doesn't fit. So we need to update that algorithm to try to rotate the item and then make it fit if it doesn't fit the first time. So if we go to the um, inventory component, if I can find it, inventory component, and we go to try add item, and let me just go to it on my other computer as well. Uh, try out item. Okay, so we just need to make a small modification to this. So basically what we want to do is if it if it goes through the whole array and it's about to return false to say, no, I don't fit. Before we return false, we want to try to rotate the item and then run this again to try to add it at a rotated orientation because maybe it will fit that way. So instead of returning false right away, let's add a sequence node and hook it up to the completed. And then we're going to add a do once node because we only want this to happen once, well, at least once every time this function is called. And so we want to rotate the item. So we will say get item object. And we will say rotate. And then we will say we want to do this all again. So we basically want to take this node. We want to drag it all the way around to be back inside of this for loop. And we can make this a little bit neater by just adding some reroute nodes here and kind of making it go more around like this. And so what it does, again, is it tries to add it at its default orientation. And if it gets through all that without adding it, it will then do this once where it tries to rotate it. And then it tries to add it again at the rotated orientation. And then we'll come back here and this do once will fail. And then since it has failed, we want to then rotate the item back because we want it, we don't want to change the rotation if it failed. And then after that, we want to then just return false if it's failed completely at this point. So now if we run this, and we try to pick up this AK, you'll see it actually rotates and then adds it to our inventory because it wouldn't fit otherwise. But for all other items, it doesn't bother rotating them because they fit just fine. And so yeah, I think that might be the end of it. Um, this has by far been the most complex tutorial I've ever made and the longest one, so congratulations if you managed to get this far. Um, if you guys like the tutorial, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. I also have a Patreon if you guys want to support me there. That's always greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, if something doesn't work correctly, you can also join my Discord channel. The link is in the description of this video. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.